I think we have to be very sober here. Though. Number one, we have to wait for an Israeli response. And number two, the quote-unquote proposal, the ceasefire agreement, uh, has been reported in many places in many different forms. I would suspect that what, if in fact Hamas has agreed to anything uh, and expects the Israelis to agree, it would be to a phase one. That it was to say, that is to say, the exchange of 33 um, women, uh, the elderly and the infirm, in exchange for an asymmetrical number of Palestinian prisoners, as much as 700 or 1,000, 100 of whom have you been accused of or convicted of killing Israelis, uh, and a 40 day, that was the number mentioned in uh, one of the reports, a 40 day temporary ceasefire. What had blocked the negotiation so far is that the Israelis, one of the issues, the Israelis had not accepted Hamas's demand that this phase one basically um, produce a comprehensive ceasefire and withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza, essentially an end to the war. So it's not clear to me whether or not Hamas has accepted, when they say they've accepted the Egyptian Qatari proposal, is this the broader proposal for three phases to actually end the war? Or is it phase one, which is the more limited exchange? So I think the good news here is that it could preempt uh, any sort of a significant Israeli ground campaign. It would result in freedom for the hostages, the women in particular who are, who are, who are being abused, uh, and a temporary ceasefire, cessation of hostilities, along with the redeployment of Israeli forces from certain areas of Gaza, and an end to Israeli overflights during the hours where this hostage exchange uh, for prisoners is going to take place. And remember, I would bet um, that it, it will be a few weeks, maybe not that long, before implementation of phase one could take place, given the complexity that surrounded the, you remember the initial exchange of 102 right. hostages for 400 Palestinian prisoners in mid-November. So a lot we don't know. And, you know, there's also the mm -hmm. dead cat on your doorstep theory which is that Hamas has accepted trying to put the ball in Israel's court and now leaving Benjamin Netanyahu with the decision whether to agree or not. The president's phone call this morning, clearly they discussed this issue. And since Bill Burns is in Doha, in Qatar, CIA director, I'm, I'm, I think this is probably more, more real uh, than not real. Okay. And uh, to your point, there are still a lot of details. We don't know. The statement that we got from Hamas did not provide further details on what exactly this deal uh, would look like, what it all entails. And we still have not gotten word uh, from Israel. Uh, but Aaron, it, it, it's worth kind of going back to that point you were just making about now it kind of does put the ball in Bibi Netanyahu's court. If Hamas says, okay, we agree, what kind of position is he in? Uh, if he does not do so in return, not just geopolitically in terms of the consequence he could face from uh, a Biden administration that might be very unhappy with that decision, but also domestically, knowing the great deal of pressure that he is under at home. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, to quote the president, here's the deal. Uh, Secretary of State um, Blinken described the Israeli proposal uh, last week as, quote, extremely generous, unquote, thereby, I think, locking the administration in to whatever the prime minister was prepared to agree to that over the last 10 days Hamas had rejected. So if, in fact, Hamas's agreement puts on the table new conditions and they expect the Americans to press the Israelis hard, um, the Biden administration is going to have a tougher time having praised Netanyahu's initial offer. So this is what I mean by the by the sort of diplomatic gamesmanship, one-upsmanship that's circulating here. But I suspect, given the fact that the president had a conversation with the prime minister in the last, what, several hours, the fact that uh, CIA Director Burns has been in uh, Cairo and Doha uh, managing all of this, he knows what's in that deal. And I, mm -hmm. I suspect he'll be able to give the administration a pretty accurate read as to what to expect 
uh, from the Israelis. I wouldn't imagine under these circumstances, if Hamas's acceptance is real, and if it applies to what the Israelis had agreed to, then I think chances are you'll you'll see us uh, you'll see a move to the next phase, which will be the preparation for implementation of phase one. On the other hand, if uh, Hamas has put stuff on the table and the administration thinks it's reasonable and realistic, yeah. and Netanyahu had not agreed, then you may see some friction. Yeah, well, it's worth pointing out that in the statement that Hamas posted on Telegram, they said they were accepting a proposal put forward by the two countries of Qatar and Egypt, not Israel. So I wonder if there is maybe a difference in in what the administration was talking about versus what Hamas says it's agreeing to today. Again, we're still awaiting details. Just finally, Aaron, given that you were suggesting that this may take weeks to actually implement, is there still a chance in your mind in our final minute with you that Israel could move into Rafa in the interim? as they have already signaled to civilians there, they should begin moving out? No. If, well, no, if, the, if, if in fact Hamas has accepted a credible proposal that's within the Israeli ballpark, um, I, I think the odds that the Israelis are moving to Rafah uh, under those circumstances, it, it, to jettison a deal which, on which the administration has banked almost everything. Kirby admitted the other day there's no plan B. President wants to change the pictures of Gaza, free the hostages, surge humanitarian assistance, and try to manage the domestic political fallout uh, from accusations that he's mismanaged this war, unhappy with progressives, and the Israelis yeah. jettison that. Well, I think you can draw your own conclusions what what might happen as a mm -hmm. consequence.